Hey everyone, this is Yan from Devolutions, and today I'm really excited to share with you some of the enhancements as well as the additional features that our team has worked hard on to put together in our latest release, version 2023.2. Now this latest release will affect Remote Desktop Manager as well as Devolution Server and Hub Business. Some of the features we'll be looking at today are unified, meaning that what works in Remote Desktop Manager also functions in Hub and Devolution Server. I'm primarily going to be using Remote Desktop Manager as well as it's linked to two different data sources. The first data source I'll be using is our Hub Business, which is our cloud-based data source. And our second data source I'll be using is our Devolution Server, our self-hosted platform. So let's dive right into uh, Remote Desktop Manager. So the first feature is the ability to request access to other vaults. You'll notice here, Kelly only has access to four vaults. But if I switch back over to Bob as the data source, we have a lot of other uh, vaults available. Well, now with the little three little points here, as well as in the web interface of Hub and Devolution Server, you'll see a new section here that says either browse vaults or request vault access. Here are the vaults she does not have access to. So now she sent the request access for that. On the other end, the administrator or what's called a vault owner will receive that request. So then when I'm logged in as Bob here, if I go to the dashboard, you'll see here there's a pending vault access request. Uh, I wanted to show you really quickly what it looks like in Devolution Server. So when you're logged in online to Devolution Server, if you simply click uh, the three little points there and you click view all vaults, Kelly is presented here with a request access to these other vaults as well. If I go to Hub Business, I can click on the three little points, go browse all vaults, and then you'll notice it's very similar there as well. She can request access from the administrator or the vault owner. So if I go back to RDM here, he can go here and he can click on it. And then it says, okay, uh, Kelly is requesting access to this. And then he can either approve or deny it. So he's going to go ahead and approve it. Now that the request has been approved, if I log in as Kelly, now that new vault will appear. Here's the caveat. Just because the vault appears doesn't mean you may have set permissions. So you'll have to make sure that as an administrator, she has access to maybe view all entries, but not execute entries. You might say, how does this vault stuff work though? Does that mean all my vaults are available for people to request? No, because we understand that some of those vaults you do not want other people to see. So we've added a new toggle switch or a flag for each vault that it's either public or it is private. If I go back on to my Devolution server, because that's the data source I'm using, in SQL, it would be very similar if you go to the vault properties and in Hub as well. I'm going to go ahead and edit this vault and you'll notice now I have the thing called vault visibility. Now this vault visibility, I can set it to public or I can say private. If I do private, that means it's going to be like you've always done. You have to invite people to the vault by adding them manually and so forth. All the vaults by default will be set to private and you'll have to manually select them to public or you have to change your system setting so that they're all public in the first place. I mentioned vault owners earlier. This is something that we've added and the vault owner is simply another approver to give access to that vault. So this is a non-administrator person that can be assigned to a vault, like maybe a manager of the marketing department. Now the person still has to have permissions set up in order to access the vault. That's what this vault owner is here. And in Devolution Server, you simply go select and you can add somebody like Bill can be a vault owner. Now he'll be notified whenever there is a vault access request to this specific Windjammer show case fault. So now let's move on to our temporary access enhancements. Now temporary access is something that we've had in our previous versions as well, but now we've added some additional functionality to this as well. So notice here, she has access to this uh, vault here. She can view the entry as well as view attachments and add edit the attachments, but she cannot edit the entry or even execute the entry, which means she can't open this RDP session. If I go back here and I click open session, now we have a problem. You do not have the rights to perform this action. Would you like to send a request to get temporary access? Now, when you click yes, you'll see we'll get a couple additional things. First of all, now we've added this custom time frame, so you can request access for future time. Let's say that you are a uh, supposed to do some maintenance on the weekend, and the administrators are out of town or they're busy. Well, you can request access on a Wednesday to have the server for eight hours on a Saturday or a Sunday. The administrator can approve it, you know, Thursday morning while they're taking their coffee, and they'll see the reasons why. And then during that time frame allotted, you can have access to that resource and not have to bother an administrator at all. 
The second thing we've added to is notice here on the left, we have a new column here that says entry dependencies. So once this gets approved, guess what? This Windows administrator um, credential will also be approved at the same time. So let's say I wanna request this access and I click send request. The request has been sent and he can approve or deny it. So if he approves it here, oh, by the way, there's a dependency on that. He could he could edit those times as well and um, give her a message and approve or deny it so she can go be along her way. Now, before I approve that, let me show you what it looks like on the Devolution server. Uh, once again, you can go to the access request here and see what's available and you can view it uh, and see the information. It shows there's a linked entry there, which is a dependency. It shows the person. So as just the same amount of details as the remote desktop manager, but in the web interface, uh, requesting access is very much the same and hub. Let's say I have Kelly here and she's logged into Telemark and she wants to run this SSH here. Well, in the corner there, you can say this and say request temporary access, it's just a little drop down, and then you'll have the same thing here where if there's dependent entries, you can do that as well as you can set a custom time frame, and you can send the request to the different approvers away goes the request and it does the same exact thing. So along the lines with requesting temporary access, we've now also added the ability for an administrator to grant temporary access to a user. This is when a administrator knows, let's say on the weekend, that somebody's gonna be away and they have to give access ahead of time to a certain user, very much like the requesting temporary access, you can select a entry like Telemark and up here, there's a little button that says grant temporary access. If I click on that, I can say, who do I want to give access to? So let's say uh, Kelly needs to do this uh, on the weekend and you put in a message and everything. So that's the grant temporary access in Remote Desktop Manager. Now, once again, if I flip on over to um, the web portal here, I can go to my vault. Uh, let's pick some random thing here. Let's pick a Windjammer 46 and uh, let's hide my face here so you can see. But in the top right there, I can click on this and I could say grant temporary access. Very similar format of window comes up here and uh, you can pass it to what user you want. And then um, you can also set the custom time frame. And then if I hop over to hub, uh, I could do the same thing here. I can go to uh, whatever entry I have and I go to the right top here and say, you know, grant temporary access and it works very much the same way, okay? Now, here's something interesting that we've added across the board too. It's something called a system vault to host VPNs, macros, and contacts, okay? So you'll notice down here, RDM users, uh, on the bottom here, I have my, uh, my regular shared vaults, then I have my user vault, and then now I also have this system vault. I can put VPNs, like I have here a special VPN called Windjammer VPN, as well as a couple macros, and I have a couple contacts, like a Bob, Kelly, and Maurice. Now you say, what's special about that? Well, now what's nice is, instead of having to create a VPN in each and every vault, let's say you had eight vaults, and you had a, the same VPN for all eight vaults, well, you'd have to create it eight times. Well, now, this is accessible wherever a VPN is required. So let's say I go to uh, an entry here, and I just for fun, let's go down this downhill to Berlin. Well, I can go to the properties, and then here in my VPN, now I'm already using a VPN because it's inherited, but I could say, uh, you know, connect if unable to ping or port scan, and then now I go to type, and then I'm gonna click on the session, and then in the session settings, I can say, well, what is it linked to? And notice down here, I know I got a lot of entries, but I have this Windjammer VPN that is in my shared uh, system vault. So now I can access this anywhere. Also, I can, uh, if I scoot over here to his user vault, um, you know, I have a company credit card here that's in his user vault, and you can link that, uh, that information here as well to the system vault. So notice the card owner now, instead of being manually typed in, so now I can use Bob, Kelly, or Maurice information for that card, uh, let's say, and it's shared across the board. So that can be useful as well. Okay, next up is specifically something in Remote Desktop Manager, and we're really excited about this. Well, now in our AD console, we've made some additions here. Now we have this tree view here where you can see all of your domain computers and your accounts, the locked or disabled uh, indicators on user accounts. We have streamlined how to unlock, enable, disable, and reset password as well. Uh, you can add new users and new groups here, which is very handy. There is some, uh, there's a recently modified here, recently locked and recently disabled user function, which is kind of 
have it's kind of like a little bit of a reporting functionality you can delete objects definitely more enhanced active directory uh console and i think uh, you'll want to check that out because it has some really interesting functionality now, while we're on the topic of scanning your network for resources, uh, there's a tool that I wanted to revisit here called the Network Scan Tool. And our team has made some pretty significant changes here in both performance and functionality. So let me start by opening it up and defining a range. It's gonna discover a whole bunch of accounts, all sorts of different types. It recognizes what session type it is and the IP address and everything. If there's a session that already exists within your vault, it won't show it here. Now, if I want to, I can actually connect to it directly and it'll launch an RDP session. I can import it if it's a resource that I wanna use. So very, very handy. I wanted to show you an additional functionality with that as well is if I right click anywhere here in my vault I can go import and say import with network scan so I'm gonna go ahead and define uh, the same range here and I'm gonna go ahead and say ignore existing sessions because I don't want it to import anything that I already have and then I can go ahead and select which resources I want so I'm only gonna select a few of these there you go I think that's good enough and now RDM is gonna go ahead and import all of these and notice all the properties are filled in they are ready to go so this can save you a lot of time, especially if uh, you're starting up and you wanna import a bunch of, of your resources currently on your network, or if maybe you've been using Remote Desktop Manager a long time and you didn't realize that this functionality was even available. We've made a lot of enhancements to it, a lot of performance boosts, and I think you will really, really enjoy using that. Now, headed into Devolution Server specific, we've added just-in-time elevation at checkout. So now with a, a privileged account here, so let's look at this financials manager account here. I could set the custom time frame just like we did with our other checkouts, but now you'll notice this elevated as. These are all Active Directory, either groups or user accounts. As a user, I don't have those types of elevated permissions. Well, now you can actually request access as a different user and then when you check that out and then it gets approved by administrator, you can elevate the permissions just for that amount of time. And then after that, your permissions will get scaled back as well. In order to set that, you have to go into your administration and then you go to privilege access in your actual PAM provider. You'll notice here that in the settings here, we have just in time elevation and you have to connect and select which groups and users that you want available for elevation. Now, while we're in Devolution Server still, I wanted to show you uh, something that we've been working on and uh, a lot of folks have really had some positive feedback for this. We recently just added the ability to launch RDP sessions via the web browser. So our teams decided to tackle having a PowerShell remote console and it's really, really cool. So here I'm launching the PowerShell terminal and I can use any basic commands, uh, whatever commands you guys like to use. I'm just showing a few of them here, like get process and so forth but we're working on adding even more functionalities in the future uh, even more different supported types via the web browser so that's going to be interesting and of course what's the advantage of this is you can also pass all of these through the gateway so it adds uh, rapidity as well as security to what you're doing now something we've just added to our hub business as well as remote desktop manager is what we call the user interface profiles even though kelly is a service technician so she would have access to remote sessions and stuff but let's just bear with me for a second here so notice if she clicks plus on her account you know she has access to rdp sessions and so forth and credential entries and all that kind of stuff and you know to streamline this interface what we've done now is this doesn't change her permissions at all it just changes what she sees on the screen if she has access to it if i go to the account you can click settings in the usage profile here we can go to it professional which for her it's the default right now and when you click business user you notice here when she clicks plus there's just websites alarm codes bank accounts that's it there's no rdp sessions there's nothing like that if i go into remote desktop manager now i'm logged in as bob here okay so bob is a super admin he's got access to everything in the world even with this when you go to business user whoop, we lost administration tools and things like that it's very very simple just kind of a you know home edit view window and then now when you go to new entry there are less entries available we understand bob is an admin so bob can see everything anyway so it has nothing to do with your permissions has everything to do with what the user can see. That's just something uh, additional that we've added for those users that may not need to have access to everything on the screen. 
All right. Well, I hope you're not overwhelmed by all the things that uh, I shared with you today. There's a lot of things as temporary access and requesting access to new vaults and all sorts of stuff. Also, like I said, in the description below are links to all of our blogs where we detail these features a little bit more and explain all of the different enhancements that we've made across the board. Thanks again for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. And we'll do our absolute best to give you content that's relevant and valuable to help you become more efficient users of the solutions that we provide. So thank you and have a great rest of your day.